What's up, positive bitches? How are we doing today? If you're hearing this episode, you are meant to be here, so keep listening. On that bitches positive podcast, sometimes we will laugh. Other times, baby girl, we're going to cry, but we will always leave feeling our most empowered self. That is our most positive bitch, babe in total connection with herself. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the secret behind the reality of our mind and our mind's interaction with the universe, the electromagnetic field that we reside in. Because so many of us are after, what's the secret sauce? How can we get everything we desire? Why aren't I getting everything I desire? But Susan down the fucking street is baking cakes and getting everything she desires. That is everything we're going to tackle today. You don't have to worry about how old you are, where you come from, who you've been, None of that matters. It doesn't matter where you've been. It matters where you want to go. And we're going to get into that in today's episode. That's right. Any secret, any secret sauce that you've been looking for, any stone you feel is unturned, that is what we're going to dig into today. And I'm not leaving anything, anything out. I feel I've learned from the best of the best coaches and mentors and business people and the things they have taught me, oof, we're going to dig into that today because it's things that you don't hear. You don't hear everywhere. It's things that are maybe embedded in child movies but are not taught to us when we're older. And yeah, I will explain what I mean by that because you're probably like, Cece, um, (laughs) come again. Don't worry about it. We will get into it all. I do have an update about this microphone. We're working with a new microphone today. Hopefully we like the sound quality a bit better. And I just am so happy to have a different microphone. That last one was not doing it for me, okay? It was not keeping up with uh, the positive bitches. Before we get into it, of course, I have some of our usual announcements. If I mention any program, any links, everything will always be in the show notes. So if you want more information on it, just go to the show notes and you can find all the links there. If you're not yet following me on Instagram at Vibin with CC, V I B I N with C I I C I I, be sure to follow me there. You definitely want to follow me on Instagram because I do daily videos and stories how to ground yourself, how to pick yourself back up, basically what we talk about here. But instead of long form content, it is a bunch of mini golden nuggets for you to bite into and get the juice, get the tea from that content. If you are looking for a life coach, an energy coach, you can DM me now on Instagram and just let me know you're coming from the podcast, you want more information and I will give it to you. I have another spot open in my Magnetic Mastery program. I've been obsessed with this program so I keep just opening up more spots. I have another spot open. It is a perfectly tailored to you 12-week program where you will learn how to put yourself back on the pedestal, how to embody your most magnetic self, how to release what's no longer serving you, break out from your past patterns, and ultimately not get mad, but instead get everything. If you're interested in either the Magnetic Mastery Program or my other programs I offer year-round, DM me on Instagram asking more about coaching, and I would love to tell you more. If you're going through a breakup, you know what to do. Join the 21-Day Breakup Globe Challenge where you will get daily daily golden nuggets for transformation, to refocus on you, to move through the pain, and ultimately glow up. If you're dating and you want to understand why is everyone ghosting me? Why do I keep repeating the same pattern? Don't sleep on the Calling Your Power Back workbook where you can learn a three-step process to call your power back and feel your best when dating. Without further ado, let's get into today's episode. So we're going to start with 
the secret sauce. Recently, me and my boyfriend were watching clips of the Kung Fu Panda. And in this movie, this old wise turtle is always talking about this scroll. And when the Kung Fu Panda sees the scroll, he will automatically know how to become this warrior. When the Kung Fu Panda gets this scroll and opens it up, It's only for his eyes, but when he sees it, he will have the secret to understand how to be the greatest Kung Fu master out there. But only when he gets this scroll and unlocks these secrets will he be able to become this master. As the story moves along and eventually the Kung Fu Panda, he gets the scroll and he opens it up and he starts freaking out. What? What? Do you know why he was freaking out? Because there was nothing in the scroll. There was no secret. He looked at the scroll and there were no words. There was no images. There was nothing there. And he just stared at the scroll and he's looking at the other master and he's like, dude, what the fuck? There's there's nothing in here. Is this all a myth? Was all of this for nothing? Have I been lied to? You told me I would be this Kung Fu Panda if I read this scroll. You told me I could become this master, that this scroll was for my eyes. And once I read this scroll, I would be this master. I would be able to defeat anyone. But when I've opened it, there's nothing there. So all of this is a fucking lie. Everything's a lie then, is it? And he gets so depressed and he gets so sad and he's starting to leave the city because he's like, what the fuck am I doing here anyway? I'm not, I'm not this Kung Fu Panda because there's nothing in the scroll. And if I was this Kung Fu Panda master that was in this legend, if it was really me, there would be the information in that scroll. But when I opened it, there is nothing there. There is no secret. There is no secret. Huh. There is no secret. Hmm. The thing is, I feel that a lot of people are always saying, I have a secret this, I have a secret that, I have a secret this. It's not really a secret at all, though. It's not really a secret. It's so obvious. It's so obvious that we forget how obvious it is. The quote unquote secrets that I share are obvious energetic shifts we can make. The secret part, it's just a word. And words can never fully encompass the truth. Words can only point to the truth. But when I say, oh, I love my partner, I love my mother, I love my dogs, the word love can never fully encompass how I actually feel. It can point to it. It can touch on how I feel. It can try to explain it. But words can never fully encompass, they can never fully explain the depth of my emotion. We use the word secret, but we need to demystify this word secret because baby girl, what if I told you the same way there was no secret for the, for the Kung Fu Panda, there's no secret for you. There is no big secret of this is the secret to become successful. This is how you do it. This is the secret to that. This is the secret to that. We can say the word secret. We can use that word, but it doesn't actually mean there is this undercover, undiscovered Meaning, the secret, what I'm going to tell you this quote unquote secret actually is, is so obvious. We just don't say it, but it's so obvious, and most of us actually already know the secret. The real secret is (laughs) there is no secret. There's obvious truths that we don't think about, that we don't talk about, that we don't go into, but there really is no secret sauce. Even the Kung Fu Panda's dad in the story, he's like, all right, I got to tell you something. My secret sauce, there really is no secret ingredient. I just say there's a secret ingredient. And so it becomes this larger thing. It, it, 
it takes on a whole new energy. When we say I have this secret, blah, 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 that technique, that ingredient, that recipe, it takes on this new fancy energy. The word is attractive. We want to know, ooh, there's a secret. What's the secret? What's the secret? These secrets are no secret. They're obvious truths that maybe we just have forgotten about, or maybe we're not even thinking about at, at all. To fully understand what we're talking about here, it really goes back to how we operate as machines. Because yes, we are this everlasting spirit. We also are this human body, which operates very, very much like a machine. And we know if we don't lubricate a machine, that shit gets rusty. It's the same thing with our mind. We need to be lubricating our mind with what we wish to see in our reality. Why am I saying this? Why am I saying this? Because we become what we think about most of the time. If there was ever to be a quote unquote secret, that is the secret to our whole reality. You want to unlock this matrix, you want to understand manifestation, you want to take your life to the next level, you become what you think about most of the time. Period. Henry Ford has said this. Confucius has said this. The Buddha probably said this too. So many amazing thought leaders have told us this time and time and time again. And we package it as, oh, here's the secret. That no, 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 no. There is no fucking secret. This is how reality works. We become what we think about most of the time. So right now, if you're feeling like a little Kung Fu Panda moment and you're opening the scroll and you're seeing, wait a second, there is no huge secret to a billion dollar company. There's no secrets making millions every year. There's no secret to 10K months. It's just me. That's exactly what the Kung Fu Panda said. He said, oh, oh my God, there is no secret. The secret is me. It's, it's just me. The secret is that there's really no secret. It's just you and your mind and this reality. And we become what we think about most of the time. I recently went to a barcade, which is an arcade and a bar in one space. It's really fun. If you're like me, if I have a drink, I'm falling asleep in the next five minutes. I have to be stimulated by my mind or my body. If I'm dancing, I can go all night. If you put me in front of a pinball or a sky ball machine, I believe it is, or even bowling or killing dinosaur games, I will, I can go all night, but I have to be stimulated. So I was like, you know what, Erasmo? Let's go to a barcade because that is something so fun that is us engaging with one another. It's not just going out drinking. Let's have fun. I met up with my friend. It was great. What did I learn from this night out? When we were playing Skyball, let me just, you know, I think it's called Pinball, but Erasmo told me it's called Skyball. I, I need to Google it to make sure I'm giving you the right, that motherfucker was right. Okay. Yep. It's called Skyball. Damn. <laughs> okay. So she doesn't know everything. It's fine. It's fine. Anyway, so we're playing sky ball and it's like bowling, but you're trying to get the ball in the 50 bucket or the 100 bucket. And while we were playing, I realized something about what I was doing and it made me think of this podcast episode. When we were playing sky ball, what I would do to get the most amount of points is focus on the bucket, not even the ball, the bucket that I wanted to put the ball into. I would focus on the 50 point bucket because that would allow me to win a lot faster than just getting it into the 10 point bucket. Most of the time when we're playing a game, we're looking at where we don't want the ball to go. We're like, ooh, the 10-point the ten point bucket, I really don't want it to go in that direction. The 10-point bucket, no, that's the worst. Or we're looking at the zero-point bucket. And then what do we do? That's where the ball goes. We throw it towards what we don't want. What I did was the exact opposite. I focused on where I wanted the ball to go. Why? Because you become what you think about most of the time. And I want to flesh this out. You become, you get what you focus on 
most of the time. If you're focusing on putting the ball in the 10 point bucket, let's say you're like, I don't want it to go there. But if that's what you're focusing on, the universe doesn't understand negation. I could say, I don't want to break up. I don't want to break up. I don't want to break up. All the universe is hearing is break up, break up, break up. I could say, oh, not the 10 point bucket, not the 10 point bucket, not the 10 point bucket. But all the universe hears is the 10 point bucket. The moral of the story here is we get what we think and focus on most of the time. If you're focusing on the negative, you're getting the negative. If you're focusing on your past, you're getting your past repeatedly manifested over and over and over again. I used to do this exact same thing in tennis. A lot of the people on my I was on varsity tennis in high school. It was a small high school. Wasn't that hard to make, but I was good. And I would be playing and I would get these insane shots. And I remember thinking like, how the fuck did I just do that? And when I unravel my thought process, I realized my quote unquote secret sauce was focusing on where I wanted the ball to hit. There are certain angles on a tennis court that if you hit the ball on that line, it will go in, but then it's too hard usually for the opponent to hit the ball back. I would barely look at the ball. I would see it coming towards me, but my main focus was where do I want that ball to hit? on the other side of the court. I was focused on where I wanted the ball to go. I was focused on what I wanted. I didn't focus on, oh my God, no, am I going to hit this ball? I don't think I can hit it. Oh my God, I'm getting so crazy. Because when you get into that mode, what are you doing? You might be saying, no, I don't want, but all the universe hears is I'm not going to hit the ball. We become what we think about most of the time. We get what we focus on most of the time. We experience what we're thinking about, what we're focusing on most of the time. In Formula One, the racers, they actually tracked their eyes to see where their eyes were going. When they're making one turn, they're already looking and figuring out in their mind how they're going to make the next turn. This is really prevalent in sports. People who are really amazing athletes, they are the top of the line, they're focusing on exactly what they want to bring it into their reality, to get that result. I recently, don't even get me started, went to a, oh God, a baseball game. Oh, no, oh God. I, you know what? Thank God they have a timer now to make the game shorter, but I'm just not a baseball girly, okay? I'm not a sports girly. I I love tennis because I played it, but I did not grow up watching or, you know, doing the whole sport situation. I liked playing. I went to sports camp. I went to basketball camp. I did all that really because my friends were doing it, and I was like, social inclusion, me too, (laughs) haha. And I was really in my mind wanting to go to drama camp, which I eventually did. But I never liked watching sports. I could play. Okay, fine. But watching would just throw me the fuck over the edge. Anyway, I was dragged to a baseball game. The compromises we make for love. Hello, that's me right now going to a baseball game. And what ended up happening is my boyfriend was telling me about how these players are crazy, athletic, and they have to actually use their intuition when hitting the ball. And I'm like, intuition? Okay, you've sparked my interest. And when he told me about this, I was like, holy shit, I need to include this in the podcast because it's exactly what I wanted to talk about this week. So basically, this is what goes on. I don't know what they're called, but you know the guy who hits the ball? The batter. I think it's called the batter. I don't know. Did I make that up? I have no fucking clue. Anyway, the guy who hits the ball and he has a bat in his hand, so I'm assuming that's the batter. When the ball is being thrown at him by the pitcher and it's 95 about miles per hour coming towards this guy's face, the ball moves so fast that they actually can't see the ball. They actually don't know where it's going. And it's so fast that the mind can't conceive it. It happens in about 400 milliseconds. But for the mind to even process that, it takes about 400 milliseconds, really more. So when your eyes are seeing this really fast ball come towards you, 
And then your eyes have to signal the brain who then has to signal the muscle who then has to move you. There's not enough time for a person to process that fast moving ball all at once. Think about when you look at a fan and it's off. When a fan is off, we can see all of the different parts of the fan. We can see each wing. But when you turn a fan on, it moves so fast that our mind can't conceive each wing. It looks like the wings just disappear. We kind of see it, but they're moving all around. Our eyes and our brain, it can't process really, really, really extremely fast movement. So when these batters are hitting the ball, they don't actually know where it's going. They don't actually see it. They're using their intuition and hitting where they think the ball is going to be. So what a lot of these players do is use their own instincts, their own intuition. They assume where the ball is going to be and they instead focus on where they want to hit the ball. Same thing I would do in tennis. And this is something for us to take a second and be like, okay, Okay, interesting. There are ways that I can use my mind to get me what it is I want. Because at the end of the day, yeah, we are these eternal, beautiful, loving spirits, but we're also this human body. So 50% of us is this eternal higher self soul, and the other 50% is this human body. We need to use both parts of ourselves to our advantage to get what it is we want in this physical manifestation. Our mind, the machine part of us, it's going to talk. It's going to chatter. It's going to be up all night and all day. We might not be able to always turn that chatter off, but we can change the direction in which that chatter is speaking. AKA, if it's negative chatter, we can transmute that into positive chatter to at least get us closer to the reality that we want. We essentially have to lubricate our mind. If we don't lubricate a machine, oh girl, it's going to rust. If we don't lubricate our bodies when we're wanting wanting to get intimate, and girl, a girl, it's going to be rusty dusty. We need to lubricate our mind just like we would a machine or other parts of our body when we are getting into it. I saw a comment on one of my reels recently where this positive bitch was saying that the mind chatter really eats away at her. It's a lot. And that can be true for a lot of us. Sometimes the mind doesn't shut the fuck up. Here's the thing though. You can make it talk for you. It can be your cheerleader instead of being an internal bully. You can shift the direction and the words your mind is saying to make it work for you rather than against you. So if your mind's going to talk 24-7, girl, let her speak, but let her talk for you, building you up rather than against you, disempowering you. How do we actually do that? got to start having conscious conversations with yourself. When you're saying something negative and your inner bully is talking, cut that bitch off. If you saw someone talking to your friend the way you talk to yourself, you would intercede and stand up for that friend. If you saw a kid on the playground talking to another kid the way you talk to yourself, you would stand up for that kid, intercede, and cut that shit off. You have to start being your own cheerleader by interrupting those negative the bullying thoughts and start saying, wait a second, I don't know if I still believe that. Wait a minute, I don't think so. I am going to create a reality that works for me. If my reality is created based off my own thoughts, maybe I should start taking accountability for my own thoughts. Why? Because we become what we think about most of the time. We see what we focus on most of the time. We get what we put energy towards most of the time. If you're telling yourself you're ugly, you're fat, you're not worthy of anything, that's what you're going to see in your reality. That's what you're going to become more of. When I was trying to release weight, I was so confused why I wasn't dropping the weight. And yes, there are hormonal things and there can be a bunch of different things going on in your body. But overall, a huge theme for me when I was not losing that weight initially was, I don't get it. 
I trying to lose this weight. I'm trying to release this weight. Really, why isn't come? Why isn't it coming off? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because I look in the mirror and tell myself I'm fat every day. Maybe it's not releasing off my body because all I do is criticize my body instead of appreciating my heart beating for me, even when I'm trashing on myself. Instead of appreciating my legs that even allow me to go for a walk in nature. Instead of appreciating my hands and my arms for allowing me to be able bodied and pick up a fucking weight. Maybe if I would focus on that, instead of calling myself fat every second, something would fucking change because we are what we think about most of the time. And let me just tell you, for someone who's had body image be one of my main lessons during this lifetime, and I'm still learning it for sure, having that as one of my main lessons and seeing my uncle who, if you don't know, my uncle is brain damage. He is really hurt. He's in diapers. He's six foot four, like 270 pounds, um, in a wheelchair. He can't talk. He can't eat. We don't know if he really understands. We think he understands some things. When I see him, he is not an able-bodied person. He can't pick up a weight. He can't even walk. He, if he can move, it's barely, barely crawling. I have to start being fucking thankful for some of the things that I got going on in my body. I might not be this, whatever image I think in my head is so great, but I have a body that can move. And I really truly believe that we pick the body we're going to learn the most about. We pick the body we're going to evolve from the most. We pick the body that's going to teach us the most. When I kept focusing on everything I hated about my body, the scale wasn't changing. I was just feeling worse and worse and worse. And even if my jeans felt a little looser, I just found something else to hate on. So it felt like I wasn't doing anything, even if I moved the needle a little bit. We become what we think about most of the time. I'm going to keep saying that. However, when I started to focus on, let me get cuter workout clothes, you know, let me try to appreciate my body instead of talking myself into a fucking hole every day. Let me try to drink a green tea for once. Let me drink more water. Let me just try to eat healthier. When I was focused on getting healthier to get healthier and not just, oh, I'm fat. Oh my God, the weight started to fall away. It started to fall away. Now, I'm not a doctor and I'm not trying to give medical advice, but I'm telling you that I noticed a very specific difference when I started changing the way I was thinking. Not only did I notice a physical difference, I just felt better. If someone's bullying you 24 7, that doesn't feel good. If you're bullying yourself, yeah, you can bet your ass it's going to feel not so fun. We become what we think about most of the time. So when I was trying to release that weight, but I was calling myself fat every day, I wasn't moving the needle that much. It was really sufferable. It was not fun. And it was as if I was fighting against my body instead of inviting my body to be on the same team with me. I think a lot of us think, oh, you know, one day I will do this or one day I'll do that. Uh, No, today is the day, bitch. Today is the day. Stop waiting for some magical fairy to come out of the sky and, I don't know, kiss your forehead. What do we even want these days? Stop waiting for some day and make today the day. Because it can either be one day or two day, and we are going to choose two day. If you never lubricate this little mind machine that we go on, we got going on, nothing will change. If you think the same way, you're going to get the same results. If you feel the same way, you're going to get the same results. If you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always gotten. That's how it works. There is no big secret. It really just is. You're going to become what you think about most of the time. You're going to see what you focus on most of the time. You're going to experience. You're going to get what you send your energy to most of the time time. So if you want to hit the 50 point bucket, focus on the 50 point bucket. Don't focus on not wanting to hit the 10. If you want to release weight, focus on your healthiest self. Not that you hate the fat on your body every single day. 
Why? Because the universe doesn't understand negation. Whatever you're focusing on, you're going to get more of. If you keep focusing on how you hate your body, you're going to keep experiencing sabotages subconsciously. You're going to keep experiencing external realities that make you feel like that same self or that older self. You're not going to get over that hump. It starts in here. What does the law of correspondence state? Our outer world is a reflection of our inner world. A lot of us try to make so many external changes when really the change we have to make is internal. I'll even notice that when I go away for a weekend and I have all this fun, my first thoughts are, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to eat the quality of food I like to eat. I'm not going to be able to work out. Is that going to make me gain weight? Oh no, blah, blah, blah. And every time I go away for a weekend, I always come back feeling even stronger, even healthier. You know why? Because I wasn't so hyper-focused on that might make me gain something. That might put my body into a place that I don't like. That's going to make me feel unhealthy. Healthy. I will say I am more hyper focused just because of this hormonal thing. It's not at this point, it's really about health and hormones than it is about anything else because of my journey with dermatitis and all these other allergies that I was experiencing. But that would still be at the top of my mind of, oh no, this is going to wreck how I'm feeling and that's going to wreck my progress when really I was so focused on having fun that my desired self who has fun looks her best too. And because I wasn't so hyper-focused on, I can't eat that. I can't do that. I can't do that. I actually always feel so much better after a weekend like that. When we're trying to put so much effort in, and I'm using body as an example just because it's what I experience, but this can be work. This can be relationships. This can be anything. When I'm so, oh my God, I have to work out so hard. I have to run a thousand miles. I have to pick up all this weight. When I'm so hyper-focused on that, I'm doing it from a place of because I don't want to gain the weight, because I don't want to be whatever. And that is coming from fear, not a place of, I want to feel healthy or I do feel healthy. I do feel good. I'm focusing on running from what I don't want instead of just focusing on what I do want. When I would be working out, I wasn't focusing on, Oh, I feel healthy. I feel strong. I feel good. I was like, bitch, you better run because, uh, we have to release that pound, that pound, that pound. I was running away from this fear of this body image instead of running towards what I want. And I think if we can put this into a nutshell here, stop running from shit and instead focus on what you want to run towards. You don't have to run, by the way. Make it a fucking stroll. I don't care. You can do whatever you want to get there. You can take a golf cart, okay? It doesn't matter. You can swim there. You can flow there. You can run, walk. You pick your desired pace, okay? Because it's really not about that. What it's about is instead of running from this is what I don't want, because when we do that, what are we focusing on? What we don't want. So what do we get? It's what we don't want. Instead of focusing and running from what we don't want, start focusing on what you do want and start flowing towards it. Start running towards that. When you make your North Star what you want, you align with more of what you want. But when you make your North Star a worry about what you don't want, you end up attracting more of what you don't want. You probably experienced in school before, oh, I hope they don't call me, I hope they don't call me, and you get called on. That is one of the best examples of how what we don't want we manifest. Why? Because we get what we think about most of the time. If you're always thinking about how can I be successful, oh, this makes me feel really good, oh my God, I love this, this doesn't even feel like work, those are the people who do become successful because they're enjoying what they're doing, they're focusing on building a brand or a business, and they're moving around their energy into a positive place. But if I was focused on, I think I'm going to fail, oh no, this isn't good, I'm not hitting my numbers, what am I going to get? I'm going to give you a pause. What am I going to get? Bitch, you know, scream it. What are we going to get? We're going to get what we don't want. We're going to attract failure. Failure. Because we're focusing on it. And we become what we think about most of the time. There is no fucking secret. There is no fucking secret. It's just you and your mind and how your mind works in this reality. That's what it is. 
that's it. Secret is just a word. Okay. It's just a fucking word. And I actually love the word secret. It's like, Ooh, it's like so fun, but there is no secret when it comes to this. It's just about how you think, what you think and what you're focusing on. That's it. So maybe this podcast episode is making us think, okay, I need to lubricate my mind more. When I wake up scrolling on TikTok, isn't giving me what I need to be successful in the day. A huge thing is setting ourselves up for success. If we're opening our phone the second week we wake up, that's kind of setting us up for failure. I've never woken up and went on my phone and then felt better about myself. That's never happened in my life. What I do, I wake up, I'm a person who is very much in my mind. So I like to listen to things as I'm brushing my teeth, as I'm cleaning my room as I'm doing laundry. I'll do an audiobook. Right now I'm listening to Teresa Caputo's audiobook. It's actually so good. She's a Long Island medium, if you don't know. I was shocked. I was like, wow, you know what? I would never expect this. But lo and behold, that's what I'm doing. Or I will put on an Abraham Hicks audio on YouTube And again, what am I doing? I'm lubricating my mind for what I want to see in my life, for what I want to enhance or really develop or attract towards me. I don't listen to negative music or negative media because that's just putting trash in my mind and then I'm unconsciously attracting a bunch of trash. So how do we lubricate ourselves? One, we as soon as we wake up, we're doing something that's going to uplift us, not put us into the ground. We are grateful when we wake up. Every single morning, I tell myself, I am a luck generator. I'm attracting lucky and amazing opportunities. I'm open to all financial opportunities. I am blessed. Thank you, God. Thank you, guides. Thank you, angels. I look at my vision board. I'm lubricating my mind over and over and over again. Here's the thing. Most of us are not consistent enough and we don't do anything for long enough for it actually to work. You're probably not going to wake up tomorrow in a $10 million house. And if you do, please DM me and let me know how the fuck you did that one. That's probably not going to happen. What you need to do and what I do, because this is what actually works, you become what you think about most of the time. If that's true, then what do I have to do? I need to start thinking about what I want to become most of the time. So that means I need to be consistent, consistent effort internally and externally looking at my vision board, saying my affirmations, filling my mind with things that are going to help me grow because if we're not growing, what the fuck are we doing? We're dying and I'm not about to die. Okay. I have too much thing to do on planet earth. I do not have time for that. Okay. So anyway, we are lubricating our mind. What kind of books are we reading? What podcasts are we listening to? What are we looking at? Are we looking at images of Instagram models that make us want to die? Or are we looking at our vision board that uplifts us and makes us excited for our life? Unfollow the people who make you feel shitty. You owe them nothing. They probably don't even care. And if they do, that's their problem and it's none of your business, okay? So focus on, look at, read, listen to, literally Imagine just diving into a pool of things that are going to uplift you and that's what you need to be doing. What are your North Stars? Write them down. What is it that you want? What do you want to become? What is it that you want in your life? Write it the fuck down. And then you can literally reverse engineer that of, okay, if I want my own business, who should I be listening to? What should I be reading? What should I what should I be looking into? What should I be experimenting with? You have these north stars and then reverse engineer them to understand what you need to be filling your mind up with. Because why are we focused on filling up our mind? Because we become what we think about most of the motherfucking time. That is the non-secret secret. Okay, that is it. Most of us are so concerned with random gossip, random chatter, random blish, blosh, blish, blosh, blish, blosh. Who the fuck cares? Honestly, who the fuck cares? Because you know what I think when someone starts to gossip? I'm like, holy shit, that's not going to come before my dreams. I've had these dreams since I was a teeny bopper watching Hannah Montana. You're not about to get in front of that, okay? Move along. Move along, ma'am. That's what I think about. Part of lubricating your mind is cutting off those conversations and interactions that aren't filling you up. And it's literally just mishmash, patty wash, give a dog a motherfucking bone. It's stupid. It's stupid conversation. Yeah, I don't even like that word. But honestly, yeah, 
some convos are just straight up dumb. They're just stupid. There's just no point of having them. Like talking about just random, random, random drama, 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 gossip, gossip, gossip. Wow, you're lubricating your mind for what? More drama? I mean, no. If you're like me and you need your little drama fix, watch reality television. Why? Because not only will you get the drama fix, but you'll also gain awareness about yourself, be able to feel your emotions while you're watching them. And I swear, maybe it's just something in my journey, but reality television really helped me heal. And that sounds so weird, but when you're looking at someone going through something you've also went through and you can cry with them, it feels like you have this connection with them and it feels like it's safe to release. Okay, minor segue about reality television. Anyway, I gotta love it. I do. I just do. We gotta start lubricating our minds because what we think about, what we focus on, what we look at, we become over time. Does it take consistency? Yeah, but you're a fucking positive bitch, so that doesn't matter. Does it take effort? Yeah, but you're a positive bitch, so that doesn't matter. Does it take what we perceive as time? Yeah. It does. It does. Does time really exist? Blah, 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 that whole thing. Okay. In this realm, time exists as a certain, a certain way, I'll say. It's very different in other realms, but on planet earth, time is a buffer that allows us to refine our thoughts so that we actually get what we want. Because if you think about it, if you thought, oh, I want this, and then it manifested and you're like, holy shit, I did not think this through. We would have a plethora of really weird things walking around planet earth if we were able to manifest that quickly. Part of learning how to refine a manifestation from thought to physical 3D is part of our soul's lessons while we're here. So this time buffer, that's going to be there in this realm. We don't need to get into does time exist. In this realm, it does. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at. Does it really exist? Okay, that's a whole other topic that we don't have time for today. But in this realm, there's a thing and it's called time and we do perceive it as time and it's something that we can use to our advantage when we are refining our vision through time, you're going to come up with contrast and there's going to be things you don't like. Use that contrast to your advantage to refine, wait a second, am I focusing on what I want or what I don't want? So while we're going through all these things and we're lubricating our minds, we also need to be thinking about, okay, am I interrupting my inner bully? Who am I listening to? What am I reading? What am I looking at? What am I spending my time and energy doing? And when we come up with contrast during that time, we take a pause and we say, wait a second, time is gifting me contrast right now so I can further clarify what it is I want before this thing fully manifest. So if I get an opportunity that's kind of what I want, but not really, that is a moment for me to say, thank you time for letting me see where I am vibrationally. I want to further refine this. This is what I actually mean. And I'm going to think about, and I'm going to visualize, and I'm going to feel about what it is I do want. Because we become what we think about most of the time. I'm just going to get that tattooed on my forehead. I feel like I say that almost every other episode, but I'm just going to get it tattooed. So I will be just your reminder. Maybe we need to write down, we become what we think about most of the time. I become what I think about most of the time. What the fuck are you thinking about? Because that is the culprit that is manifesting your reality. I love you so much. I hope this podcast episode has brought clarification. And you know what? If it brought more confusion, drop those questions at Vibing with CC. Ask me your questions. Maybe we'll even do a podcast with questions from you beautiful, positive bitches. If you liked this episode, if you enjoyed it, if you learned something from it, share it with a friend, someone who maybe is in need of revamping their mental mind and their mentality. If you resonated with it, please leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It means so much to me. It helps the podcast. And if not for me, do it for you because girl, why not get some good karma? You can also now leave comments, I think, right below each episode on Spotify. So check it out if you can do that. Say hello. I want to say hello back. That is a new feature that's going to be interesting for sure. And I will see you in the next one. Mwah.